Welcome Engineering Static students. This is ENGR 214 ampersand for Bellingham Technical College and today's lecture is a review of the vector product otherwise known as the cross product. So this one is important because it's what is used literally in the definition of moment or torque. Uh, so force acting at a distance from uh, an axis or a point of rotation is literally defined in terms of this cross product. Um, so it's very important that we understand the definition of the cross product and how it works geometrically the same way we did the dot product because that will give us insight in how to um, calculate moments or torques, that, which is the same thing, uh, from forces that are in different positions on our rigid bodies. Okay, uh, the cross product is also known as the vector product because by definition it produces a vector. So remember the dot product produced a scalar, just a number. The, the vector product produces a vector, hence its name. So if we're going to multiply with a cross product uh, vectors a and b to give a, to give a vector c, we would define that, that product uh, c as a cross b and it's going to have a geometrical definition of the magnitude of vector a times the magnitude of vector b times the sine of the angle between. So this is looking very similar to the dot product except instead of the cosine we have the sine of the angle between a and b. Okay pretty easy so far. And it's going to be pointing so here's the magnitude part. Magnitude of A times magnitude of B times the magnitude of the sine of the angle between them. All of this so far is a scalar, but it's going to be pointing in a unit vector direction that is given by the right hand rule and effectively forms the planar normal for the plane that contains A and B. So if you remember the right hand rule, you would, if you're going to cross A into B, you'd point your fingers in the direction of A, the fingers of your right hand, right hand in the direction of a vector A and you would curl them around in towards the direction of vector B and your thumb is going to be pointing in the direction of, of the cross product resultant, which is going to be C in this case. So A cross B gives vector C. So you can see A and B are kind of defining this plane and C is sticking right up out of it and here's the little perpendicular indicating that it's a planar normal. Lots of sketches of that that you can find published as well. Okay, so the result, the cross product of two vectors is always perpendicular to both of the vectors that formed it. So if you want to, if you want to get something that's perpendicular, just cross something into it and the product will be will definitely be perpendicular one way or the other. Okay so again right hand rule uh, rules for the cross product it is not commutative uh, and in fact a cross b is equal to negative b cross a so basically if we do b and we cross it into a uh, we could use our right hand rule stick your fingers in the direction of b curl them around in the direction of a uh, and if you're looking at your right hand, you'll notice your thumb is pointing in the opposite direction that it pointed when you did A cross B. And that's indicating that you now have the negative of the vector C that you got previously. So um, basically uh, B cross A is negative A cross B and the like. On the good side though, just like the dot product, the cross product is distributive over addition. So we can add two vectors and then cross another one into that, into that sum or we can cross um, one vector into the other and add the cross product of that, of that, second, um, that second term. So that's in fact one way that we, we define uh, moments of couples is we use this particular property. So very important and very handy. Okay, so we've got our geometric definition with the sine of the angle and we've got the, the vector, unit vector direction of this pointing, pointing up out of the plane defining A and B in the direction defined by the right hand rule. Let's go through the algebraic calculation because there's going to be times when our, our vectors A and B are in 3D 
and uh, it's not going to be practical to find that sine of the angle between. So this is a long method. There are matrix methods that you can you can use getting the determinant of um, a couple of matrices that end up literally being the same thing. I found that the FOIL method, just like we used for the dot product, is kind of bomb proof provided that you keep the signs of your unit vector cross products consistent and in the appropriate direction. And so this, re this requires using your right hand, doing the right hand rule quite a bit. Um, you can look up in some good vector algebra texts the, uh, the other variations for calculating the cross product algebraically. They all give you the same thing because they are all effectively equivalent. But I'll just step through this one because said this works for me and it's kind of it's based on the geometric definition plus basic algebra so it's I call this the foil method for the cross product so if I'm going to cross a and B I write out my two vectors in terms of my uh, my unit vector coordinate directions I hat J hat K hat and then of course remembering I hat J hat and K hat are all 90 degrees apart so I would start by multiplying a sub x uh, in the i hat direction times b sub x in the i hat direction. So that's going to give me this first term. So I'll have the magnitude of a sub x, magnitude of b sub x, times i hat cross i hat. So let's pull out our geometrical definition. i hat times i hat, the two magnitudes are 1, and this time I'm looking at the sine of the angle between. Well, I hat and I hat are parallel, so the angle between is zero, and so sine um, of that angle is zero. So instead of instead of being one, it's zero in this case. So this first term is zero. So let's look at our second term. So we're going to have a sub x I hat times b sub y j hat. So I end up mi mat multiplying the two scalar magnitudes, and now I'm left with I hat cross j hat. So this is a little mini cross product of two unit vectors that define in this case the x-axis and the y-axis. So I would end up looking for what the resultant of that is using what I know about the cross product. So if I took my fingers and put them in the direction of the x-axis and I curled them into the direction of the y-axis um, using the right hand rule my thumb would be pointing in the direction of the z-axis, positive z-axis. So I hat cross J hat is actually K hat. So I can substitute that in. So this term becomes A sub X times B sub Y, two scalars, times K hat. So these two terms end up in the orthogonal plane, which kind of makes sense. And I can do the same over here. I can multiply, here's my other, we're gonna have basically in two, three, you know, nine different products and so we'll do this again three times. I won't go through every one, but we'll go through the last one. So of this of a sub x multiplying. So a sub x i hat, we're going to multiply by b sub z k hat for our third term. Again, we get the two scalar values, the two magnitudes out front, and then we are left with i hat cross k hat. Okay, so if we stick our fingers in the positive x direction and curl them right straight up into the z direction, you'll find that your thumb is pointing in the negative y direction or negative j hat. So this whole term becomes a negative a sub x b sub z in the j hat direction. So you just keep going with all of that and you'll find that your common terms end up zeroing out totally the opposite that you got with the dot product and that's because the sine term here in the definition is going to give you basically opposite behavior. If you thought if you think of the common terms as the matrix diagonal of a matrix it's all zeros. So when you get done you're going to end up with with basically um, six non-zero terms uh, that you'll add up, keeping very, very strict track of all of your, your signs. Uh, and there will be times when the right hand rule gives you a negative sign, so just retain that. So that's what I've done here. Uh, just I've included it in its own parentheses where warranted. And then collected terms, a 
according to what unit vector we get and this ends up being the expression based on the coefficients of the original vectors and you'll notice this looks quite similar to what you would have gotten from the determinant method where you end up having um, sums and differences uh, as you calculate that. So that's the algebraic way of calculating a cross product. It's a little bit long, um, granted, uh, but compared to trying to, to find um, this angle in 3D, it's actually easy. Uh, and in 2D, it's very easy. So use whichever method you want to actually do the algebraic calculation. But the biggest thing you're going to need to know is the significance of the sine of the angle between and the fact that the product is perpendicular to both of the factors that created it. So the cross product is the way we create things that are perpendicular. Or if you, um, if you know that the cross product of something is zero, uh, you know that the sine of the angle between them is zero. So basically, um, you know they're parallel. So that's another criteria for knowing that something is parallel. So that gives you another equation relating things. So that was our whirlwind um, review of the cross product uh, definition, how to calculate it algebraically, and the significance in terms of perpendicularity and defining a planar normal. So that is it for this lecture.